yeah okay so guys um i have to quickly kind <laughs> of conclude the um psychometry part and I, I think i should let me see if there's any justice i need to do on those guys actually if you can just pause the if you just pause the video and go through it you'll be good okay let me let me explain this before moving on to the sort analysis part back okay for the dilution principle um you will notice that this is my phone already so my laptop is there and we have to get the video across to you guys today okay so um one thing you need to note here is that okay we are diluting right yes so c1 is the initial concentration c2 is the final concentration so if you are adding water you expect the concentration to be lower and if you are removing water you expect the concentration to be higher so another thing is that okay c v1 is the initial volume of that thing you have so you get then what was what would v2 be now the 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 final volume right that means your v2 will not be what v1 plus v water that's the water you added and if you notice very well don't forget n equals to cv so the cv here is equal to mole it's just telling us that mole before is equal to mole after that's just the idea so if you read it you are going to get it better and then coming on to the next slide um uh, and it's okay yeah when you are mixing the same guys together let's say for example i'm mixing um h 2 4 and h 2 4 but different concentration and volume so this is the formula you use c1 v1 plus c2 v2 cos v1 plus v2 so c1 v1 here is the first guy c2 v2 here is the second guy it is not final volume and initial no 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 c1 v1 will be for 20 cm cube and 0.1 molar shake it why c2 v2 will not be 80 cm cube and what 0.2 molar so that's the idea on that and then um i don't know okay moving on so yeah it's simple see what everyone represents okay that's just the idea i explained everything there actually so well just to uh, for the specific gravity too that's the formula you need to use below i'm coming oh i thought i'll be able to understand it so that's just the idea on that so moving on now to our sort analysis so for sort analysis basically it is just a lot of theories that you need to just i don't know it's not the word cram but just take it and know it. you have to know everything sure you get so then lots of analysis that's sort of practical it's practical basically that this are education of pure substances and what are pure substances compounds and those compounds are sort here in this case so moving on so the useful apparatus yeah we need to know is you have the keeps apparatus this is for the intermittent production of gases you have the film cupboard for the production of poisonous gases like CO, you have the light brick condenser for converting gases to liquids. We have the black amber bottle for storing nitrate salt. For we have the delivery tube for bubbling gases into liquid. Bubbling gas, let's say you have a reaction of gas and liquid now. Yeah, you can use your delivery tube to bubble the gas into the liquid. You have the desiccator for keeping salt dry, not to dry salt, for keeping them dry. You have the Hoffman's voltmeter for splitting water into constituent ion or for knowing the volumetric composition of water. And this is what they also use in the word electrolysis of water. You have the bomb calorimeter for determining the enthalpy of a reaction. So all these guys are very important. Intermittent production of gas in the sense that I need gas now, I want to produce it now, and I need it. I, I will get it now. That's intermittent. You just quickly you just pour two things together and you get it. It's going to give you the gas immediately. Then you have the film cupboard. It's just like something the 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 kind of made in order not to make the gases produced to come to the atmosphere to your environment something that you can she gave my point so and for production of poisonous gases library condenser you know what condensation is black and bubbles nitrate salt on if light if light gets to them they start decomposing so you have to turn them into something that will that light will not get will not be able to pass through and that's the black and bubble that's the idea for that okay moving on so for solubility test now so basically when salts are dissolved in water some are soluble while others are insoluble that's one thing to note so and all sorts containing sodium potassium so if the 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 the, the following point i'm giving is going to just help you to know salt that are soluble and those that are not soluble that's the idea so also any sort that has sodium potassium and ammonium will be soluble even hydrogen ion h plus i think that's the third rule really there so sodium potassium ammonium and hydrogen ion 
if you see them in that compound it is soluble automatically so any sort of nitrate no3 minus salt maybe calcium nitrate anything nitrate is also soluble so those are the soluble guys like those guys i just mentioned they are what soluble in all cases but for some exceptions now all chloride salt are soluble except mesilego so mesilego means mercury chloride silver chloride lead chloride and good chloride so but less chloride is soluble when you eat it when it is hot it will be soluble that when if you remember the solubility um video i said solubility of of solids increase with increase in temperature while for gases decreases with increase in temperature okay so mercury lego mercury chloride silver chloride lead chloride and good chloride please don't forget that for that for chloride salt they are soluble except salt mercury lego then for sulfate salt except bill you know Garrett's bill if you are playing ball so bill so that's barium sulfate and what lead sulfate but calcium sulfate is not very soluble like that she you get so calcium sulfate when it's, it's it forms a suspension i believe you know what a suspension is now from the solubility video if you've forgotten you can check that video now okay then um all carbon salts and phosphate salts are insoluble except if they contain sodium potassium ammonium you get you get the gist so moving on ph test of salts now so what does it or how do we know if the salt is acidic basic or neutral don't forget if it's salt has hydrogen ion it is definitely acidic if it has hydroxide ion in it it is definitely what hydro uh, basic but if it does not if it is just like a normal salt how do we know if it is acidic basic or neutral so the yeah, one you want to just need to know is you have to just note strong acids and strong bases and um, for the strong acids now for the strong acids now we have um h2so4 hcl and hno3 so these three guys are what they are strong in the sense that other they are also other strong guys who like in fact the strongest acid is hclo4 but you before they you can see salt that has hc like hclo3 of course is a salt shake it but um it is not that common they, they will ask you a question they won't ask you a question on it but they ask you you can also include it here so what you just need to know is okay if you now do strong acid but there are also strong bases than this in fact, the strong one of the strongest bases, NH four CH three, is a very strong base too. Oh, NHCH three, yes, NHCA three, NACH three, and NH four CH three, they are strong. So let's not that. Or if if it's NH two or something like that. So strong acid plus strong base will give you a neutral salt. Strong acid plus weak base will give you an acidic salt. Weak acid for strong base will give you a basic salt. Weak acid for weak base we can give you any of this three depending on some stores but let's leave those weak guys alone sometimes if you have hcl and neoh you're going to form an acl right that's a strong what a strong a, a, a neutral salt rather she you get so let's say for example i give you potassium carbonate potassium is coming from a strong base carbonate is coming from a weak acid that's what the basic salt so that's just the logic there moving on so the composition of salt so this one the table explains it all so i i i provided the electrochemical series by the left so coffee now can manage all zinc for some people having copper mercury silver gold and platinum that's my woman mnemonic you can use popular scientists can make a zoo in a low humid country more successfully grow that's another one you can have king nathan can marry all zombie female students provided he can undo against authority provided you can use anything you just have to know it in that order it's very important so then carbonate salt now so and we now have two tables now carbonate and nitrate salt wow, wow. how would their decomposition be like how would their decomposition be like so for carbonate salt now so the first two guys there sodium and potassium so sodium and potassium carbonate are stable to eat shake it. sodium and potassium carbonate are stable to eat in the sense that Sodium carbonate will not decompose. Potassium carbonate will not decompose. No matter how you eat them, they will not decompose. But when it comes to nitrate salt now, they, 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 they do. So what would they now give us when they decompose? So if it is pot potassium nitrate, it's going to give us potassium nitrite, KNO2 and what O2. If it is sodium nitrate, it will be what? Sodium nitrite and what? And O2. That means if, they, if you have a question like KNO3 will decompose to give us what? KNO3 will give us what? KNO2 plus O2. NaNO3 will give us what? NaNO2 plus O2. But K2CO3 will give us what? Nothing. It is, it is not going to decompose. It, it, may, it will melt. It will just melt if you are eating it. And that's a physical change. So then, coming to the other guys now. From calcium to copper, C to C. 
So you did the compose to give oxide of metal plus CO2. That means calcium carbonate now with the compose to give me what? Calcium oxide and what? CO2. Magnesium carbonate to give me magnesium oxide and CO2. Um, aluminum carbonate, although they say the guy does not exist, but some people say it exists, it, it exists already. Sure. But anyhow, any, aluminum carbonate to give us what? Aluminum oxide and what? CO2. That's the idea. But the nitrate of it, calcium nitrate, will give us what? Calcium oxide, NO2, and O2. That's the idea. So we don't need to. So for the really decomposed guy, they don't really decompose like that. So you can just tell them that they are also stable to some extent. So that's just the idea. And then for the just the table is uh, going to explain a lot on that. Okay. So the conversion of salt, like the continuational. So sulfate and um, phosphate salt are relatively stable. Yes, note that. So that's why like K2SO4 will most likely not decompose. Even calcium sulfate will not decompose. They are kind of relatively what stable. So then the conversion of ammonium salt. So this one is very, very funny. It's just that. Just take the ammonium salt, split it into ammonia and the water and the acid. That's the idea. So, NH for CL will be ammonia and HCO. In fact, this one too is just ammonia and the acid. But the acid will also now decompose. Look at the acid will be what? H2CO3. But if H2CO3 will decompose, look at H plus there. It's going to give me what? Oxide of the metal, although it's now hydrogen. That's what? Oxide of hydrogen, which is water and CO2. That's the same thing we have here. So, water and CO2 there. So, NH for SO3. NH NH4 to SO4 rather I'm sorry for that. It's SO4. It's going to if it's SO3 it's going to give me H2SO3. If it's SO4 it's going to give me what H2SO4. I can't edit that now. I think it's on laptop. I will have edited. I will have, I will have edited that actually. But let's move on. So for the first phase, we the same thing. But the nitrate and nitrite guys, note that very well. When it is NH4 NO3 it is N2 and H2O. And when it is NH4 NO3 it is what N2 and what H2O. It's just that the extra oxygen that was added to NH4 NO2. Is what is showing that N2O. Simple stuff. Moving on. So, oxides in chemistry, you can just use banner. So, the oxides in chemistry are banner. Basic acidic, neutral, and photeric. So, what you just need to note here is that for basic, it is what oxide of what? Metals. And group 1 and group 2 metals are the ones that form it most. Group 1 and group 2 metals. So, you get although some other guys from transition metals, from or group 3 metals, they also form it. But majorly, it's from what? Group 1 and group 2. Then acidic oxide is oxide of no metals. So you get. So we have CO2, NO2, SO2, SO3, N2O5, and other acid you can add like P2O5, P4O10. All those guys they are what acid that can form acid. They are just acidic in solution. Neutral oxide, CO, NO. In fact, CO is summer. Um CO is is a very, very poisonous gas, but it is neutral. So it's kind of sounding oxymoronic. Like it's something that is neutral, is now poisonous. That's how we see ammo. So amphoteric oxides now, I use salt, Z-A-L-T, zinc oxide, aluminum oxide, lead oxide, and tin oxide. So when it comes to lead oxide, it's possible you see PBO and PBO2. Go for PBO2. But if the two are in the option and there's another one that is not even here, I will advise you to pick that one. Moving on. So this color, I have to just bring it out. They ask it a lot too. CUO is black. ZNO is white when cold and yellow when hot. PBO is yellow when cold and reddish brown when hot. Note that. Very important. Okay, so gases in chemistry. So we are, we, let's just for this gases in chemistry, we to take. We are going to discuss thirteen gases actually. She get so those thirteen gases are. We are just going to look at your properties in them. They are confirmatory tests, method of preparation, uses, and other other stuffs. So let's be you may very fast it is sharp, so that the video will not get unnecessarily longer. Okay, so moving on now. So carbon four oxide now CO two. So it is colorless, odorless, but it is not tasteless. It has what a refreshing taste. That's why they use it in Coca Cola and Biggie Cola, those guys. So that's the, that's the idea. And it is acidic. The pH is acidic. So you get. So then the confirmatory test now. It turns like water milky. That's like no other gas gas does that. Now only CO2 they do. Them. It turns like water milky. Then the milkiness now disappear. In SSCO2, look at the reaction. You know, like water is COH2. Then it turns in milky uh, because that's cacotid is white and then cacotid in water is like chalk in water. So, so even it turns lime water chalky, she get. So then if now I have more CO2, instead of producing cacotid, it's going to produce calcium hydrogen trazocarbonate 4. And that one is, will it be soluble? Yes or no? It will be soluble because that's hydrogen. 
although we know that carbonate salt was insoluble but because it has hydrogen to be soluble but calcium carbonate itself calcutri will be insoluble that's why the milkiness is there but after it dissolves the milkiness will disappear that's the idea so how do we prepare it so co-carbon and oxygen when they react together the conversion of alcohol fermentation of glucose then the addition of the same acid you can check mark chapter 19 verse 7 or 6 so um you can check um mark 2 22 self. jesus also said that do not keep old wine in a uh, a new one in old body why because the new one is going to be producing co2 then there will be pressure inside the bottle then if the pressure is high the bottle will break so jesus self history <laughs> moving on so the uses now used in beverages because of the refreshing taste it's also using what fire extinguishers it extinguishes fire so carbon talks are the second one it is colorless odorless and tasteless but poisonous okay then it is neutral there is uh, the confirmatory test it turns like water milky this is not like co2 but before this guy can turn like water milky it must first burn with a pale blue flame it must all burn in air after burning in air what will happen to it it will be converted to co2 then the co2 will now turn like water milky but the way we just identify is that okay for well, this gas can this gas turn like water milky directly no but when this guys now react with when it burns in air with a pale blue flame can it now do that yes that means what co that is the idea so how do you repair it coke with limited oxygen then um and they, they use it in metallurgy metallurgy is in like extraction of metals because it has it is a very very good reducing agent how because it can remove oxygen from anything to become co2 that's the idea so what have you now it is colorless odorless and tasteless ph is neutral confirmatory test it turns an hydro an hydros copper sulfate from white to blue white not blue to white it is white to blue that's why i put wahab w to b then an hydros copper to red from blue to pink that's boiling point b to p it turns pink to blue it is blue to pink boiling point just like boiling point b to p that's the idea the method of preparation the transition reaction will produce what water vapor combustion of hydrogen will produce what water vapor even when you also react hydrogen and oxygen together you also form water that's the idea hydrogen sulfide now is 2s it is colorless and it has a rotten x smell i do not put the taste because basically does it like who, who will taste it but it was it will also have an unpleasant taste basically so it is acidic yes then Confirmatory test, it decolorizes the purple color of KMNO4 with the deposition of yellow sulfur. Now it's going to add hydrogen to KMNO4. Addition of hydrogen is reduction. So you get that reduction will not change the color from purple to colorless. But the remaining sulfur that is in it, you see it there. That's the idea here. If it's giving us yellow sulfur, there is one that will not give us yellow sulfur. That's the way to differentiate it. Then it changes the color of K2Cl27 from orange to green, not green to orange. So you get this orange to green, OG. Not green to orange, not go. That's why I say don't form go from OG. Okay, so chlorine gas now. This greenish yellow and irritating odor, unpleasant taste too, actually. Then acidic, of course. But when it's after turning it must be pink, it's going to what? Bleach it. That means the bleaching agent. So it turns that either paper dark blue. That's the idea here. The, the action of HCl on strong oxidizing agent, usually MNO2. Note the function of MNO2 in this case is an oxidizing agent. Okay, then, so HCl plus MnO2 will give us what? Um, your MnCO2, and then it's going to give us what we also need, chlorine gas, CO2, and also water. Okay, so it's a bleaching agent and it bleaches by oxidation. Chlorine bleaches by oxidation, then it is for plant fibers like cotton, C for C, cotton, she get. Why the other guy that we're also going to discuss, you see that? So it's also using preparation of water as disinfectant. She get you can chlorinate water. Chlorination is one of the process. So moving on, sulfur so four oxide now. So it is it has a pungent it is colorless with what? Colorless with pungent smell like that of burning matches. Because it's actually present in matches. And when you light your matches, the sulfur you need to burn and that's the odor you are perceiving. Okay, confirmatory test. It decolorizes the purple color of KMNO4. This one does not deposit yellow sulfur. How does it decolorize it? It takes oxygen from it from them. That's the idea. The preparation, the action of HCl on Na2SO3. Then use this is a bleaching agent and it bleaches by reduction. 
cut for animal fiber seek s for s so2 for seek co2 for cotton moving on hydrogen gas call less dollars and this less it is neutral don't be deceived because hydrogen is having h it will be acidic no it is neutral she get there it does not release any hydrogen at all in reaction so confirmatory there it gives a pop sound when reacting with oxygen pop that's the sound see preparation the action of hcl and zinc reaction of reactive metals on h2 because they will displace it so potassium if potassium reacts with h2 you are going to have potassium oxide and hydrogen gas that's the idea so nitrogen gas now is an inert gas so it is called less odorless and tasteless it is neutral it does not have any confirmatory test because it does not even react so if it did not react you will not have any confirmatory test so prepare by the decomposition of nh nh for no2 now the decomposition reaction is highly exothermic hence we use another part so you don't apply it to nh for no2 directly why because it's going to cause a lot of other it is exothermic so what you just do is you produce the guy and then the ease that you generate from the production is going to decompose it. That's the idea. So the same thing actually applies to the preparation of this guy, but it is colorless and faint sweet smell. In fact, it's what they call the laughing gas. You burst into laughter when you just um, perceive it small. You start laughing. So they use it in anesthesia, anesthetic condition. Like when they need to make sure that your patient is not feeling pain on the stores, you can use what? N2O. So confirmatory test is to increase the glowing splint like oxygen too. Oxygen also does that. So preparation by decomposition of H4NO3. No the same thing happens here. Sure you get. Oh, I didn't I didn't update this. I just copied the equation from the previous slide. So it is KNO3, not KNO2. And it is NH4NO3, not NH4NO2. Okay, moving on. So oxygen gas now it is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. Neutral. Okay. It requires a glowing splint too. But for between NO, N2O and O2, how do you differentiate? You can differentiate by with a lot of reactions. So, you get. so for example, now if the body reacts with copper, uh, N2O will form extra nitrogen, oxygen will not form any nitrogen. That's the idea. If they both react with anything they are reacting with, you will be able to differentiate them actually. So preparation now. Prepare by the decomposition of KCO3 in the presence of MnO2 catalyst. MnO2 again. MnO2 has oxidizing agents in chlorine production as catalyst in oxygen production. In fact, it acts as something. A quick bonus here. See, once you are done before before six o'clock, tell me the function of MnO2 in a particular primary cell, and also state that primary cell. Okay, moving on. I said you compare N2 actually. So the nitrogen two oxide, it is colorless, neutral, and then. Um, I did not mention the odor and the taste because if you want to perceive it, if the guy just come to the atmosphere to react with oxygen from NO2, that means anything you are, you'll be perceiving is for NO2, not for what? NO. This is no NO. So, preparation by the action of copper with dilute or cold HNO3. So, I also need you guys to also do something show the reaction of copper with hot and concentrated HNO3 before 6 o'clock today. So ammonia gas now, it is colorless with choking smell. Yes, that's I think that's present in your urine. Then the, it is the only common alkaline gas known, and the other one is phosphine. It's not common. Then this confirmatory test now, it gives a dense white forms of ammonium chloride when reacted with HCO. Very important to note. I think I explained this when we are dealing with the one of the previous videos yeah, that NH4Cl does not really decompose, but that's just it, sir. So NH3 plus HCl will give us NH4Cl. Then the reaction of NH4Cl with CaO is to that's the way to prepare it actually. So nitrogen four oxide, um, reddish brown with irritating odor. Then it is acidic. Yes, it forms. In fact, it's a mixed acid and hydride. It forms two acids, the HNO2 and HNO3 when it dissolves in water. So it turns out like a paper blue black. Then it is very by the composition of lead nitrate. Don't forget. In our decomposition table now, we have a different way for the producing NO2. But the one that is best is lead nitrate because it does not form what crystals. Yeah, good. We are done with the gases. Coming to flame test. Flame test is more than this. So I will, I will advise you to just go online and check, um, search for others. But the most common one is 
Potassium and it is what pop poopy for pee. Sodium is what is a golden yellow color. Calcium is brick red, while lithium is red. Note that. Then copper is bleach green, while lead is blue. There are others, but then the reagent they use most is what HCO. Very important to note. So test for cations. Very very simple actually. Just get that for cations they are the positive ions, and we use two reagents, NaOH and NH3. So let's take NaOH first. So the cations we are going to be dealing with are these guys, and iron two is green, dirty green. Iron three is very brown. Copper two is blue. While lead, aluminum, calcium, and zinc are white. So the idea is, um, look at that for example. The ones in brackets are was soluble. The ones not in bracket are insoluble. In excess, she get. So how do we test? When you add NaOH to the salt in drop, when you drop it, you are going to see the color. Then when you now add it in the SS, you now see if it dissolves or not. So that's what we are doing. Why for ammonia the same thing? Except that calcium is not here, calcium does not react, then it is only copper and zinc that is soluble. Lead and aluminum, they are not what's soluble. So for the cations now, so, okay, general notes, general notes. General notes, we have sodium, potassium, and ammonia, am, ammonium, they will not react at all. Then copper, zinc are soluble in ammonia because the because of the formation of complex ion. I think I give assignment on complex ion the other time. So special test for cations now. So these ones they, are, they might not be so necessary, but just go through it and write them down, and also know it at the back of your mind. Just have it that anything can happen. They can ask it. That's why I added it. So let's first let, let, let this for anions now. So we what I did is I classified anions into three: the halides for those in group seven, the common anions like the carbonate, sulfate, nitrate. All those nitrate is not here. Um, other guys shall you know my point? Why the special anions like the nitrate and the sulfide ion? So, starting with the halides. So, starting with the halides now. So, to test for halides, we use two reagents, two AgNO3 and HNO3. So, AgNO3 test for color, HNO3 test for solubility, but they can also add what? NH3 that shows the reverse of um, HNO3. So, if HNO3 is for solubility, is for the color so when you add agent to the solution you see the color so you get so basically i think um for these anions now for the allies for the allies so among the allies chlorine chloride ion is white and insoluble in hno3 while bromine and iodine are yellow and soluble so white and insoluble for chlorine then yellow and soluble for what for the other uh, for the for bromine and iodine so moving on if the reaction is reversed, as in you add HN3 before HN3, it's only chlorine that will show reaction. So moving on, uh, the common anions now, so these guys, they are all white, shake get. Then the test for them, we add a BACL2 followed by HCL. BACL2 is testing for color, HCL for solubility, and it is only SO4 to minus that it is insoluble. Don't forget for chlorine now. Uh, is chlorine soluble or insoluble? It is also insoluble. Why so far smile is also insoluble? Those are the key guys you just need to grab there. Another guys, it will just be the reverse. If the addition is reverse, it's only SO4 to minus that will also show us reaction. So now to the special ions. And it, uh, the nitrate ion and the sulfide ion. So for the nitrate ion, um, that's the browning, browning experiment, and so the browning experiment basically is used to detect the presence of nitrate ion. So freshly prepared FeSO4 followed by concrete SO4 is added. A browning is formed owing to the formation of FeSO4 dot NO. It can ask you what's the component of the browning. It was FeSO4 dot NO. Then for the sulfide ion, it's just like H2S. You know what it does already with the deposition of what's yellow sulfur. So, so the last part of the what, of the class now, types of reaction, and you know what the reaction is already reactant giving product, so, but we have different types. So, the first one we have here is what the combination reaction, just like the name sounds, is reacting with B to giving what A B. That's the idea. So, X plus Y to give me X Y, 
two NA plus C or two my two T L two to give me what? Two NAC or simple stuff combination. Then the second one, the composition reaction. So we have the it is the opposite of combination. If for combination two things are coming together to form one, for the composition one thing is given two. And um, that's the example there. Then the next one, precipitation reaction. This one is very very important. So two solutions of soluble salt are mixed, resulting in an insoluble solid precipitate formed. How do we know it's precipitate is even forming? That's because the two reactants are soluble. Why the one we are now forming is not soluble? That means it, we can see the way it is coming out. It is precipitating out. So the chemical reaction that involves the formation of an insoluble product is called a precipitation reaction. The reactants are soluble, but the product formed would be insoluble and separate out as a solid. Very important. The chemical equation by which the chemical change is described is adequate for reaction in solution. But for reactions of chemical compounds in, ad, in aqueous solution, water, the typical molecular equation has been representations. Okay, moving on. So the molecular equation may indicate formulas and reactants. The product and product that are not present in and eliminate completely the formulas of the ions that are the real reactant and product. They are just telling us how the reaction will be. If the substance in the molecular equation that is actually present as isolated ions are written in the form of the ions, the results will be an ionic equation. Very important. So in transition reaction, I don't need to emphasize on this acid base. It's just like I'm neutralizing an acid by with the base or neutralizing a base with an acid to form a neutral substance. That's neutralization. So acidic bases give me neutral. That's the idea. Types of chemical reactions again. We have combustion. Combustion basically just means a substance burning in air. A substance burning in air. And if you are burning in air, means you are combining with oxygen in air. So you get and the products will now depend on what on what you are what's actually burning. If it's, a, if it's an hydrocarbon, you are going to see CO2 and water coming out, or organic compound. So, displacement is reaction now. Something is displacing something. That's the idea. So, for example, in a displacement reaction, we have X plus YZ is giving XZ plus Y. Note that, please. So, uh, it's also called a substitution reaction. Yes, it is also called this because we are substituting what um, atoms. Why I think this is the last slide. So the composition double displacement reaction is just like okay, you have A plus B give me C plus D. So you now that I have A plus D, B plus C is what double decomposition. Um double double displacement rather than double displacement reaction in the sense that they shuffle themselves, that's the idea. So that's that on that and we are done with the class. If you have any question, don't hesitate to ask on the group tonight. So let's take care.